Hello, welcome back to the Code Circus. Today, what we're going to do is take a look at the Vizard software and specifically focus in on something called the Python shell. This is where we can start trying out some Python code before we dive into connecting it to the 3D world. The first thing you're going to want to do is start up Vizard. So let's go ahead and do that. When you start Vizard, the first thing you should see is this getting started screen and some other windows. Over here on the left is a window called resources that will give you a listing of all the different files we'll be using while we're working on our projects. There's also, if you look down here, something called the code browser. If we have other programs that we have written, this is where we'll be able to see which programs there are. Uh, we have our standard menu across the top, which we'll dive into further as we go along. But the thing I want to look at today is at the bottom of the screen. It is called the interactive menu. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we can just see that and I'm going to do that by just moving my mouse over this bar here. I don't know if you can see it but it turns into these two parallel lines with the arrows on top and I can drag this up so I can just see my interactive window. At the bottom of the interactive window is this arrow looking thing that allows me to see what my screen um, is waiting for as an input from me. So I'm going to type in something. I'm just going to type in the number 10. And when I type in 10, up in the screen window here comes the response of 10. Let me zoom in on this. So now you can see a little bit better what I have going on on the screen. You can see I typed in a 10. Anything I type in on this shell line, the Python shell, gets repeated, bounced back to me. So if I type in a 20, it's going to say what I typed in, which was a 20, and then returns what I typed in was a 20. So what's actually happening here? Well, what's really happening is Python is reading the value of 10 or reading the value of 20 and then evaluating that and sending back its evaluation of that. So for example, if I were to do 3 plus 4 and press enter, it evaluates the 3 plus 4 and tells me the answer is 7. So it's doing some basic math for me. The basic operators that Python can do are addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. The different symbols are pretty standard. You might, you'll recognize addition and subtraction. So if I do 5 minus 2, that's subtraction. It gives me a 3. Multiplication is an asterisk, so if I do 5, shift, the 8, which is the asterisk key on your keyboard, and then let's say 2, I get 5 times 2, and that's 10. Division is the forward slash on your keyboard, which is right next to the shift and the comma key. So if I do 4 slash 2, it does division for me and gives me a Two. There are some other operators that you may or may not have heard of. We'll talk more about them as we go further on. One is called modulus, which is basically remainder math. And then another one is uh, floor division, which we'll look more about later on. And then, of course, exponential, which would be powers. When you're thinking about Python, you need to know that it, 
evaluates math just like we do in math class. And it follows what we call the order of operations. So, for example, if I say 2 plus 5 minus 3 times 7, the operation that happens first is the 3 times 7. And then it does the 2 plus the 5 minus that answer of 21 in that order. So it follows PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And if you remember PEMDAS, um, the P stands for parentheses, the E stands for exponents, the M and D stand for multiplication and division in the order in which they come, left to right, and then the addition and subtraction, the A and S, uh, those are, again, in the order in which they come as we read it from left to right. So that is a quick introduction to the Python shell. We'll be using the Python shell to write different commands in Python and try out some of our um, statements before we start writing full scripts. That is all I have for you today. I'll see you next time.